You've probably heard of the Roman persecutions of Christianity during the first few centuries of its existence. Guys like Emperor Nero famously burned Christians at the stake, and prominent Christians such as Ignatius and Polycarp famously met their demise at the hands of Roman executioners. But as I talk about in another video, the Roman persecutions of Christianity during the first and second centuries must have been isolated erratic events. Basically only if the local authorities saw it as a problem. Emperor Nero's persecution of Christians only occurred in the city of Rome, and Pliny the Younger, a governor in Asia a minor executed a few Christians in his own province. But Pliny didn't know how to handle these cases and had to ask Emperor Trajan for legal advice, which indicates this must have been a relatively rare situation. Many scholars think that Christians lived a perfectly normal life in the 1st and 2nd centuries CE because the Roman Empire was a religiously diverse place with neither the means or the motivations to hunt down what they saw as superstitious cult members. But in the 3rd century things got a little worse for Christians. An emperor by the name of Decius came to power in 249 CE, and he immediately decreed that everyone in the empire must sacrifice to the gods. And our sources imply that a lot of Christians refused to sacrifice, leading to them being put in jail, tortured, and even executed. But what were the motivations of Decius? What did he hope to accomplish? And was he really targeting Christians specifically? Now there are two main ways that historians have tried to answer this question. The first was that this was a specifically anti-Christian edict that set out to demolish an illegal religion. Remember, the Romans would have viewed Christianity as a politically destabilizing cult. So these historians argue that there must have been an anti-Christian legal precedent that was set down sometime under Nero that was passed down through the decades. Another argument is that this edict was a huge empire-wide supplication to the gods to help bolster unity and conformity in the empire kind of like a Pledge of Allegiance, and that the Christians were just inadvertently caught in the crossfire. This, I would say, is considered the mainstream perspective today. Scholars that support this perspective include Dr. Alan Brent at King's College London, Dr. Candida Moss at Notre Dame University, and J.B. Reeves at UNC Chapel Hill. The reason why we have these differing perspectives is because of the nature of our sources. The Christian sources understandably demonize Decius and make themselves out to be the victims. Cyprian, the Bishop of Carthage, and Dionysius, the Bishop of Alexandria, describe Decius as a demon incarnate who has set out to brutalize Christians. And Dionysius records a whole bunch of gruesome executions that Christians suffered. Even if he is exaggerating, I have no doubt that a lot of Christians refused to sacrifice and ended up on the wrong end of the Roman legal system. But was Decius targeting these Christians specifically? First of all, the timing seems way too convenient. How would a Roman emperor in the 3rd century be oblivious to the controversy that forced sacrifice would do to Christian communities? And moreover, the edict mirrors later much more more obviously anti-Christian legislation under Diocletian. Cyprian and Dionysius say that the Christian leadership were specifically targeted. Once the edict went out, the Alexandrian prefect sent soldiers after Dionysius, and Cyprian was famously forced into exile after the Roman authorities publicly denounced him. This sounds a lot like Diocletian's edict that happened 50 years later, which was much more obviously an anti-Christian edict. So the notion that Decius set out to actually demolish Christianity seems likely. Well, Maybe. There's actually not that much similarities between Decius and Diocletian. Diocletian's edict was pretty obviously anti-Christian. He ordered the confiscation of scriptures and property, he prohibited the assembly of Christians in public, and he removed their legal privileges. The edict of Decius simply says, hey everyone, let's do a sacrifice. It's a lot more ambiguous. So why do historians think that the Edict of Decius was just a huge supplication to the gods? Well, this idea comes from our archaeological evidence. In order to prove that you actually did a sacrifice, apparently you needed some sort of legal proof, a document signed by a local official saying that you did it. And we've found over 40 of these in the deserts of Egypt, most of them from the city of Theodelphia in the Fayum, an oasis in the desert southwest of Cairo. Almost all of them have very similar language, and you can actually hear the bureaucratic tone coming through. I have always and without interruption sacrificed to the gods, and now in your presence in accordance with the edict's decree, I have made sacrifice and poured a libation and partaken of the sacred victims. I request you to certify this below. I, Aurelius Diogenes, have presented this petition. These certificates not only give us a glimpse into what must have been a bureaucratic nightmare trying to get 50 or 60 million people in the Roman Empire to sign a petition, 
petition, but it also gives us a glimpse into what the edict must have actually stipulated. All of the certificates say that you should pour out a libation, probably of wine, which was a non-killing form of sacrifice in the Roman Empire, and to take a bite of the sacrificial victim, probably a bull or a goat. These documents don't say anything about renouncing your religion or converting to the traditional Roman religions. They don't mention Jesus or Christianity. They just say go do a sacrifice. So we can investigate what public sacrifices meant to Romans to try to figure out Decius's motivations. So many historians think that this was a specific type of public sacrifice called a supplicatio. This was a special type of sacrifice and prayer that the Romans did to celebrate a victory or to call out to the gods in times of danger. So the argument goes that Decius was acting in the role of Pontifex Maximus, the high priest of the Roman people, getting all the Roman people together in a huge show of piety to help ensure the strength of the empire going off to the future. Dr. Alan Brent sums it up great when he says the religious role of the emperor was seen as that of the agent of destiny, who was to transform what had become the age of iron into the age of gold. The emperor, as the Pontifex Maximus, presided over sacrificial rites, whose object was to achieve peace in place of the anger of the gods in both nature and society. So seen from this perspective, Decius was acting to help ensure the peace and tranquility of the empire by supplicating the gods. And the more people that could join the supplicatio, the more powerful it would be. Moreover, we have found two inscriptions that imply that Decius styled himself as the restorer of traditional Roman religion. So all this archaeological evidence taken together, we get the picture of an emperor who took his role as Pontifex Maximus very seriously and sought out to help bolster the Roman Empire by getting everyone together in a huge supplicatio to the gods. Seen from this perspective, the persecution of Christians that refused to sacrifice was an unintended consequence. But you can kind of understand why some Romans would lash out against them. Just imagine the anger and confusion to see your fellow townsperson refusing to do their patriotic duty. Wait, you're not sacrificing? Do you not care about the peace and tranquility of the empire? On the flip side, you can see why lots of Christians had no problem sacrificing. If it was just a pledge of allegiance with no real consequences to give up your own personal religion, sure, why not? Though Cyprian was pretty ticked off at the Christians who decided to go through with the edict, and apparently they did so in masses. But what are your thoughts? Is the timing just way too convenient not to implicate an anti-Christian bias? Or do you think Decius was completely oblivious to how Christians would respond to this massive empire-wide supplicatio? Put your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for liking and subscribing, and thanks especially to our patrons on Patreon for your continued support. I'll see you next time.